Welcome to our series, Moving America Forward. Each week we'll be focusing on America's entrepreneurs as they take us to new roads, new opportunities, new ways to fill the gaps left by today's failing companies. Our series will be looking at that and a lot more. So come with me and watch as the entrepreneurs of our nation move into the future. I'm William Shatner, and you're watching Moving America Forward. And I'm Doug Llewellyn here in our studios in Los Angeles for this very special edition of Moving America Forward, which is devoted to the study of space weather and how it impacts and affects all of us here on the planet Earth. I have four guests here at the desk with me. Each one of them is from a different company that specializes in this arena. And I'd like to introduce them to you individually now. First on my left, Dr. Kent Tabiska, who is the president and chief scientist at Space Environment Technologies in Pacific Palisades, California. Next, we come to Dr. Robert Schunk, who's the CEO of Space Environment Corporation in Providence, Utah. Then we have Dr. Devry Intrilligator, who is the director of Space Plasma Labs in Carmel Research Center in Santa Monica, California. And then last but certainly not least, we have Dr. Jeff Crowley, who's the president and chief scientist at Atmospheric and Space Technology Research Associates in Boulder, Colorado. Folks, it's nice to have you with us. Thank you very much for coming. Let me point out to you that now in another studio, standing by with a question for you is our co-host, uh, William Shatner. And let's switch to him now and see what he wants to hear from each of you. I know that you're deeply involved in the technology field, but what are some of your advancements, and how is it helpful to move America forward? Mr. Shatner, one of the risks that we face with space weather is the radiation environment on aircraft. In extreme, uh, extreme radiation environments, for example, we can get a full chest X-ray per hour on these uh, aircraft. Space Environment Technologies uh, has as its mission to take this space information and improve the quality of life on Earth. So one of the things that we're doing is we are taking very small instruments called dosimeters. We're placing those on aircraft, measuring in real time the space environment and the radiation that's on those aircraft, and then providing that information to the pilots the air crew and the passengers so that they can evaluate their radiation risks. Mr. Shatner, Space Environment Corporation's recent focus has been on HF, high frequency radio communications. HF communications are used well by ham radio operators primarily as a hobby, but the DOD uses them for military purposes. And of course, emergency responders use HF as a secondary backup communication system. Our company has developed a unique model for the Earth's upper atmosphere that allows us to determine what frequencies can be used by radio operators. And this information is provided both in real time and in a forecast mode. And this is how we're improving disaster relief efforts and other efforts around the world. Thank you, Mr. Shatner. Space weather, even though it is common and affects many things on Earth, has really not been heard about by most people. At Carmel Research Center, we predict when these blasts from the sun will impact things in the Earth's environment. For example, high energy particles can impact satellites, airlines, and, part and space weather events can even affect um, things, ground-based things on Earth. So we forecast or predict when these space weather events will arrive at Earth, their intensity and their duration, so that people who have various assets can protect them. And that, Mr. Shatner, is how we're moving America forward. Mr. Shatner, our company Astra is focused on space weather in the ionosphere. The ionosphere is important because it affects communications, navigation systems like GPS, and surveillance systems. Our company Astra is a technology development company, and we're developing new technologies to measure space weather, both from the ground and from space. So just as the, you see the Weather Channel and the Doppler radar every day, in the same way we have instruments measuring space weather all the time, both from the ground and from space. 
as I'm listening to you, it amazes me we don't hear almost ever any discussion on television when they're talking about the weather. They never say anything about what's going on in outer space. Is there a lot of weather in space? Oh, yes. It, so I'll talk to you. It, it is, uh, it's amazing. Every single moment of every single day, there's something happening from the sun, big flares, and they affect the Earth's uh, uh, atmosphere, the ionosphere, and it comes all the way down, as we finally realize now, to affecting our technology, including our cell phones and our navigation, as uh, some of our other guests will point out. Well, this is a, obviously a fascinating subject. I'm just going to speak to each one of you individually. It's interesting having representatives from four different companies that specialize in a lot of different things. Number one, who, and, and this is a general question, who are the clients th that, that you are providing this information for in general? Who, who uses it? The Department of Defense certainly uses it. The Air Force, the Navy, the Army, they use HF communications from ground to uh, ground communications from ship to shore. Um, the government labs use it. NOAA uses it. The NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center uses the information. NASA labs use it. And even um, private companies use the information on geolocation that was talked about, tracking um, containers on ships, tracking containers on trains. All of this information is used daily by many people, but it's really not that well known, as was pointed out before, that all of this technology is available well, I, and being I was used. Say a lot of people have not heard of any of this at all. And it, is it is it foreign governments as well as, as yes. interested in this as as the U.S. you know government? Yes, foreign governments are, and also there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of customers. When you think about how imaging is used all around the world and cell phones, in some countries their their only contact with the outside world are TV and cell phones and the internet, and all of those are vulnerable to space weather events. And next, Dr. Crowley, tell me about your company. Thank you. Well, Astra has two satellites in orbit right now. Those satellites are about as big as a Kleenex box measuring ionospheric space weather, even as we speak. But perhaps our biggest success is the space weather monitor that we've developed that's based on GPS signals. The GPS signals have to pass through the ionosphere to reach the GPS receiver in your car or on your tractor. And uh, in Alaska, they're using GPS-based snow plows to actually plow through the high mountain passes with 1,000-foot uh, drops on the side. So if your GPS is off, then that could be a real problem. So we've developed a space weather monitor that will tell you what the state of space weather is overhead at any moment, and you can use that to verify or to test the accuracy of your GPS system on your tractor or on your car or on your snow plow, which you really might like to know. And we're also, several of us have developed phone apps for smartphones that display space weather in information. And so our products are actually used by the general public. And so I've had emails from mothers telling me how great our phone apps are for teaching their children about space weather. Well, that's a new one. You, yeah. I didn't realize you had, you had phone apps. That, and what, is it, what does the phone app show you? Oh, it's remarkable. The, the uh, palm of your hand can now hold uh, in the case of the app that we do, it, 122 real-time data streams coming from 19 different organizations around the world. And immediately you can get at that very moment what the sun looks like on the other side of the sun, the current image, all the way down to the radiation environment that you're going to face as a frequent flyer right before you step on the plane and fly Los Angeles to London, for example. See, nobody thinks of that when they get on an airplane, <laughs> how much radiation I'm going to be experiencing, for heaven's sakes. Maybe it would be fair to ask each one of you what you really specialize in primarily and what your company does, what, what the most intensive area of your, your focus is. What would you say? I would say right now um, we have a range of products and services that we provide, but right now our focus is on HF communications. Yeah. And... Um, I guess if we talk about successes, our best success was the tsunami that hit Japan in, uh, back in March 2011. When that tsunami hit, the devastation was unbelievable. $300 billion worth of damage. Railroads were taken out, roads were taken out. Yeah. Landlines for communication were taken out and cell towers. So it turns out that Tokyo, the government, could not communicate with the, respo the um, emergency responders in northern, Jap in northern Japan. Yeah. 
And so because of our expertise, a Japanese official in the government contacted us and said, could we provide what frequencies they can use from a modeling, what frequency can you, they can use to communicate from Tokyo to northern Japan so they can keep in touch with the emergency you responders. You provided that information? We provided it on the Internet and through our apps. Very good. Let me, we're running out of time. What, what about your company? Well, we do a lot in predicting things before they get to the Earth's environment. So when something is coming towards the Earth from the sun, we predict when it will arrive at Earth, and we alert people who have satellites and other assets in space, um, and then also airlines and even power companies. That's and right. we tell them when, the, uh, for each of them, we, uh, when for their particular asset, they'll start having some problems. We predict the severity of the problem and the duration of the problem. So, and we help them decide what are the things they can do to best save their assets, whether it's to sh shut off certain uh, memory on the spacecraft, to have another uh, spacecraft take over the frequency so they can maintain their TV coverage and their cell phone coverage and things like that. Wow. Well, listen, we don't have enough time to get into this in, in much more depth. I wish we did, but this is a fascinating site. And each one of you are really providing intensive research that is that is going on right now and has been going on, and you're pri providing this information for the, the clients, of course, and the government that need this. It's really been fascinating to hear about it, and we thank you so much for stopping by to tell us. Thank you. Thank, right. you, so thank much. you so much. Yeah. I'm William Shatner, and you're watching Moving America Forward. This organization represents companies across our great nation that embody the spirit, dedication, know-how, and can-do attitude which has made America the great nation it is today. And now let's present the Keeping America Strong Award. Now it's my honor to present this prestigious award, our Moving America Forward Award, to each one of you. And let me just pass this down and add, this is for Dr. Crowley. And here you go. Each you. one of you gets one of these with our thanks and our appreciation. And I say thank you very much for being with us. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm William Shatner. And for all of us at Moving America Forward, thanks for watching.